just start off with uh, who you are and everything. Oh, well, so, I don't know. Is somebody going to introduce us? No, I'll introduce us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, hello everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Eric Teshka, and uh, today I will be interviewing my Nona, Fida Badamo. And um, we're here at her house on, what day is today, July? Hello, family. Today is July the 5th. 2013. Yes. And I've been on this earth for a long time. Yeah. How long have you been on this earth? Oh, since 1927. I was born uh, March 31st, 1927. I believe that was a Wednesday. I was one of five children, and I am the middle child. Hmm. So I, I don't remember anything from the time I was born to the time I was four years old. So my mother used to tell me, that she had two boys, and when she was expecting me, she prayed to St. Joseph that she was she wanted to have a little girl. And uh, she prayed so hard, uh, give me this wish that I'm going to have my little girl. And if you do this for me, I will light the candle every day. Well, it was going to be every week, it, uh, Wednesday, St. Joseph's Day. And uh, it was a little steady, you know, which is a little... Um, your house would be full of candles if it was every day. And where, where were you born? I was born in Montclair, 2603 Montclair, uh, Detroit, Michigan. When my mother and father came from my, uh, Sicily, um, my mother was 17 years old, my father was 23, and he told my mother, as soon as we get married, we're going to go to America so that all our kids will be American born. This was his wish. That wow, the kids 17 were be and born. 23. When they moved, when seventeen. She was seventeen. And you were the second born. And he, I was the third born. Third born. How old was your mother when she had the first? Well, kid? the first. Um, actually, he didn't come after nine months. He uh, was born in nineteen twenty-three, and uh, they came here. They got married in nineteen twenty-one in February nineteen twenty-one. Okay. And they came with the the uh, French ship. It was called the Provençal, and I didn't know that till recently. We were when we were getting uh, uh, computers. And we wanted to see the ship that they came in from, and we found out that the name of the ship was La Provençal. So your mother was wasn't 17 when you were born. She was just 17 No, she was 17 when she got married. Okay, and then as a bride. 18 when she had her first so child. So she was 19 when she had her first. Okay. Uncle Pete was born in 1923, and then Uncle John was born in 26, and I was, no, he was born in 24, and I was born in 27. And what I went age? to Italy when I was four. To visit the I family. lived here uh, for four years. But after I was born, uh, exactly a year later, Uncle Joe was born. And then uh, we couldn't go to Italy because um, another baby was coming. And that was Auntie Mani. Auntie Mani was born uh, uh, in 1930. So when she was a year old uh, is when uh, they felt it was a good time to go. Uh, to Italy, and uh, and lived there with all their relatives for a while. And you all moved to Italy. So we all moved. Well, to Sicily, right? To Sicily, yeah. We have a map. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where? Okay. Where was it that you moved to? Whoa! It's way over here. Here's Palermo, Terezini. It's right there, right on the there coast. There it is. Yes, right on the Terezini. coast. Terezini. Terezini. And when we when we uh, left here, this is what I look like. In fact, I don't have any baby pictures. This is the only picture I have. When I was uh, really little, I didn't have any baby pictures at all. That's the first picture. And I took it out of here, and I had it uh, duplicated. So, oh, yeah. So that's the same. That's, so that's, that's my mother. One, huh? She was 27 by that time, my mother. And she had all these kids. And uh, we were born uh, within uh, 10 years, all five of us. No, we were born within seven years, all five of us. It's Uncle Pete, Uncle John, and me, and then Uncle Joe, and then Auntie Minnie. So she wasn't even walking it, and she did not encourage her to walk because she'd have to be running after her. So she was just uh, holding her. She was in her arms all the time. So when we got aboard ship is when they gave us, and I, all I remember is the vaccination. Vaccination was on the ship itself? On the ship. Oh. I got vaccinated. I, I didn't like that. <laughs> I remember that. That's all I remember. Of course, as, as soon as we got there, all our relatives were there um, uh, um, uh, greeting us as we got off the ship. And my... Uh, I, I'll never forget my uh, my people, my 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 cousin, my aunts and uncles. There's so many people there. Uh, from having nobody over here, and we had this big family. Four years old at this and time. And I was you four years old. Remember that. So I remember my my 
my uncle. I remember everything after that. It's, it's really funny how it was just one big blank, and then as soon as we arrived, it I was that inoculation shot. That's what started it. So I was remembering everything after that. I was on his lap, and uh, I didn't know that I was car sick. But as soon as uh, we drove to the town, to the Rosini from uh, from the Palermo, um, I just <laughs> I got sick all over his all over his oh. clothes. But he was <laughs> he was so happy to have us. He didn't care. He just cleaned me up, and I felt so bad. And then when we got there uh, in the town, I saw all the everybody else, you know, all the and grandparents. You and had a story else. about. Uh, the, the snails there, the babalugi. Babalugi are from the from the Campania. Um, and we these went, are just these snails that, that crawl snails. around all the plants outside everywhere. Well, there's snails, snails de mare and snails de terra. The ones de terra are the ones that crawl on the trees, and the ones de mare are the ones by the water. And um, I, this is going back now. We were we were living there with my grandparents and my aunts and uncles, and in the summertime. My grandfather would take all of us to the Campania, which was Calarusa, and in Calarusa is where we lived all summer long. We spent all summers there, and uh, it was beautiful times that we had there. And that's where my grandmother would go and get the babalusi, and she would get on her apron, she would go uh, in our property where all these fig trees were, and she would gather all the babalusi in her apron, and she'd bring them in the house in a big guararuni, the big, big pot full of water, just like when you make pasta, pasta, pasta you know, big, but this was a real big one. And she poured all the babalusi in there. And uh, then after that, she would get the water out of them and put them in a real big bowl. And, and then that was, that was dinner for the, the whole summer. Them. You just eat snails. Uh, and, and Diet of snails. This was at night. With the mm. And we had the light of the moon. Because there was what no What did you drink no when you were eating all there. these snails? I hope you at least just, had a, a nice cold glass of water or Coca-Cola or something. Well, the older people down. would have wine, I guess, oh, with, with the, and the snails. And the kids just had snail the, water. The, the kids just ate the snails. I can remember when, when they oh. were too hard to get out of the shell. You get a pin. And you and you take them right out oh, of the shell with the pin. Sounds delightful. I know. I mm. could never eat them now, but we we used to love them then. And what happened when every time that uh, you had a little bit too much energy, your your uh, family would make you go into the mountains or something? And... Oh no, this was uh, my grandmother. She just loved. It. She you know she had no grandchildren before we came. And then boom, there was she only has, what, one, five? and uh, she passed away. The little girl, it's a Pepino's little girl. And she was the same age as my sisters, you know, she was just a baby. So um, when my aunt saw Auntie Mani, she just said, this is, this is male, and she took her. And she actually raised her. My mother didn't care, you know. She kidnapped take her. Her, her, <laughs> her daughter, her granddaughter. So, uh, yeah, she was so happy having, uh, everybody was happy having us all of a sudden, and you know, all these kids. So we were in the, in the town, and I used to love to scream. This was my thing, to scream. That was your and my thing. grandmother would say, you know, if you scream here in the town, people will say you're crazy, you know? You don't do that. Maybe you scream when the church bells are ringing. <laughs> At least it's deafening the screaming. But she just loved everything, every stupid thing that we did, she just loved it. So where was your designated so screaming to campagna, area? As soon as we got off the little donkey, the garretto, you know, and the donkey. That was the transportation? As soon as we got down, the transportation. As soon as we got there, she'd say, Vida! You know, and scream all you want. You know, run up the run up the mountains, and that's what I did. I was so happy screaming. She would she would laugh so hard that I could still see her with tears coming down her face. I wonder if the donkey was laughing. Because well, <laughs> yeah. he had to wait that whole time. So that that was me and my screaming, and I still like to scream. <laughs> So when that after the it was four years that you spent there, right? Four years. And then you came back to the United States. And then the time came where we had to come back. And when you and first... we were happy to come back because this was our country. This is where we were born in America. Yeah. But we had no idea what we, what was facing us. No idea. And you first started going it to school. It was not a happy place for us. <laughs> well, you were teased we, because you, you didn't well, speak English. We, how, I could how not did that speak affect a, you? A, a lot. <laughs> Can you you cannot imagine what it's like when you're you know a room full of people and you don't understand what they're talking and you, about? You were the only one myself. at school, or at least in your classroom, that didn't speak English. Everyone else was uh, native yeah, they, born. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were all uh, American born, as far as I know. Yeah, they were all American born. They didn't wow. understand me. I didn't understand them. So I was all by myself. Oh, and I used to play little games by myself. I didn't know how to occupy my time. <laughs> 
So I used to bring the newspapers from home, and when they were advertising uh, toys, you know, I would bring all this paper in school and then cut them out, and I used to make them stand on my desk, all these little toys. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids thought that I was playing, you know, but that was just my way of occupying myself because I, I, we couldn't get across, the messages across. I mean, today they have special classes, but then there wasn't any. I was just thrown in in a class that there was, there was no communication. So I know that at this time there was a lot of discrimination of a lot of different races. Did you feel ashamed of your heritage being no, Italian? No, I never did. I really never, never did. I always was proud of being uh, of Italian uh, parents, uh, you know, uh, descendants of it. I was always proud of being and Italian. There was, no, there was no problem there. But I, of course, I did want to. I want to mingle with my with the girls and and and, and uh, uh, be part of the American scene. Uh, you know, not to be Italian anymore. I wanted to be American. Well, for instance, we had e earrings on, and uh, they weren't using earrings here, so I took oh. them off. I wouldn't wear That's them. That's interesting. I wouldn't I think wear now, them. Now it would be easier. So to then, wear years, them. years later. Uh, I didn't even know if the hole was still in there. <laughs> and I, I put some olive oil on my fingers, and lo and behold, it was still there. And I was able to wear uh, earrings with, with the hole again. But I wouldn't wear them because uh, the girls were not wearing earrings over here. Oh. When we arrived in, in Sicily, it's the first thing they did is pierce my ears and cut my hair. When I came and here, started... you have to realize how strange this country was. They had snow that I had never seen snow. I didn't know what it was. Oh. <laughs> and and, uh, and my mother would tell us, you know, this is a snow. What's snow? Well, it comes down, you know, and you look at this and you wonder, oh my God, what is that coming down? So then you have to dress for it. So you have to have all these suits, you know. They used to have the one-piece outfits, and those things were so itchy. But you had to wear them because it was so cold. We never had cold weather. I mean, it was warm all year round. We never had cold weather. Now we had to wear snowsuits and boots and hats with earmuffs and gloves. And that was it a big was, surprise. It was different. <coughs> it certainly was different. So between the language and between everything being so big and between the weather, there was a lot of adjusting, a lot of adjusting. But, but somehow you make it through. And it was a matter of a swim or drown. You had to make it. You had to, you had to get out there and you had to learn English. You had to get out there and you had to make friends with everybody. And you forced yourself to make friends. And there was one point friends. that you were told to read in class. And yeah, for that years was or I, for at least well, weeks, I, you never wanted to like, read. Like I, yeah, I was in the reading class and uh, uh, everybody took their turns in reading. When it came to my turn, they would call my name to me and I would go, I was very, very shy. I was shy because uh, for a lot of reasons. I didn't have any friends, and there was boys in my room. We never had boys in, my, in our room. It was all girls. So I, I was really, really shy. So it took a while. It's not, not that I was stupid. I just wasn't, didn't know English. I knew math. Math was great, but I didn't know any English. So uh, I, I self-taught myself. I finally, and then with the help of Uncle Pete, when I brought homework, and Uncle Pete was a big help to me. And then all of a sudden, one day when the teacher called me, I got up and I started reading. She was in the back of the room. She was just shocked. She went out and she got the principal. And the two of them were standing behind, way in the back, listening to me read. And I didn't know that they were doing that. And they just couldn't believe it, how I caught on in just a few months that I was there. I caught on. Well, then being that I pa passed that grade, then I wanted to get back to my grade level because I was eight years old and they put me in the second grade. You're supposed to be in the third grade, eight years old, not in the second. So then uh, in time, I was double promoted where I was put in my grade level. I was in the uh, seventh grade by then, and uh, that's when the war broke out, when the president came on the radio, and it said that, that um, December 7th, 1941, uh, America is at war, Japan. It was a sneak attack of the Japanese bombing. I can't even talk about it to today. It just chokes me up of what happened, how they bombed all the soldiers at Pearl Harbor. What did you think was going to happen it was when, when the United States then we went were going to, to be war. at war? We didn't. It was it was a big uh, mystery. How are we going to survive? What were we going to do? Uh, the soldiers, you know, all the boys were going to go overseas and, and fight. But one thing, the war was not in our backyard. It was in Europe. Uh, it, it was in Japan, it was in the islands, it was, but it was not um, in the United States. 
So it, it did not affect us in that way, but it affected, it affected us in uh, the stuff that we were getting. We couldn't get any uh, food or uh, all the things that the luxury of, of before, we couldn't, we couldn't get any of that. I can remember um, uh, butter. We used to have butter and then margarine was introduced in the market. Margarine was uh, uh, white. It looked like lard, but it was <laughs> margarine. And then somebody came up with the idea of putting a, um, a little pebble in there and you squeeze it. It was a plastic and you squeeze it and then the yellow goes all over and it changes the Ugh, um, Just to large. change the color of it, it? it? Changing the color made a lot of difference. Now it looked like butter. Oh, so all you were doing was squeezing yellow yeah. into your But we, it never really bothered us because we never ate uh, butter or margarine. We, we, our food were, was olive oil. You know, that was our Just eat olive oil and snails and you should be good yeah. to go. No snails. That was in Italy. <laughs> no, we didn't okay. have snails. You, yeah. you switched your diet from yeah. snails to olive oil. I wanted to be American. We were Maybe in America. Maybe a little bit of yellow dye here and there. <laughs> I wanted to be an, an American. Americans had breakfast. We never had breakfast in, in Italy. We never had breakfast here. We had homemade bread that my mother made. And, so you, um, during this and whole then time, we had jam. Bread and you, jam. you didn't feel threatened as if uh, no. so there was going to be something uh, in America happening during the war. You, you knew it was always overseas. We knew that it was always going to be overseas. We used to have. Um, uh, drills where yeah. they would test, uh, uh, and we have a blackout, and we close all your uh, curtains, and the, and the house is, it'll be dark on the outside, but the inside you had your electric lights inside. Um, but what those, was that those were to drills. Do? <laughs> I, well, in case it would be an air, uh, um, we never felt uh, the need, but they evidently did, like an air, you close raid, your drapes, air raid. You can yeah. hide yourself. Yeah, air raid. That's what the well, light, what about the light the, would come up. What about the lights and the street lights? <laughs> I don't even remember about the street lights. They must have turned them off. Wow. We didn't have any street lights because it was a completely blackout for a little while. The, the siren would come on and then uh, we close the curtains, you know, close the drapes uh, or, or turn off the lights that you can't see them from the outside. And there will be somebody parading um, uh, at the outside to make sure that oh, all the had lights Paul are out. Revere out there yeah. shouting out there yes, for everyone. Yeah. We had a brother that was wounded in the war, which was so sad. My brother Pete was wounded, and we got the telegram. He was in the tank division, and it was hit. And by uh, he never talked about it, but it was from saving his buddy that he got shrapnel wound. There was no Facebook or no Skype or phone calls no, or cell phones we, or text messages. It was just a, a letter, letter, writing letters, writing a and letter, the, and hopefully and the gets letters to the right were person. censored. Everything was censored. It, when uh, when the bombs were dropped in. Hiroshima what, Nagasaki. What, it, yeah, what, was, was, what was your feelings then? Oh, that was that was a, a, a dreadful thing. You know, atomic bomb. It was it was it was scary. You know, the, the, it's like the war. The world is going to end. It was it was it was a terrible thing. You know, if they can drop a bomb and destroy a whole country uh, with a bomb, what, what, uh, you know, what what can they do to the world? We had the shelters. Uh, people built shelters. They, they were called. Uh, H bomb uh, shelters where you could go underground and stay in them. What was it like? Oh, Detroit was beautiful. What was it like to be in Detroit, Detroit. In, the, in the late 40s and the I early love, 50s? I love Detroit. Detroit was beautiful. Going to downtown Detroit, Detroit was uh, something very, very special. Uh, we used to get all dressed up to go downtown with heels and hats and gloves. I mean, it's unbelievable uh, to, just to go shopping. It, it was so beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so, the stores, the Hudson's, the Bell I mean, everything about Detroit was beautiful. And um, it, it's just sad to see some of the things that are going on today. But at that time, Detroit was a beautiful.